Hi everyone, my name is Nieves García Valiente and I'm an ocean wave scientist working at the Met Office in Exeter, the United Kingdom. And today I will be guiding you through the different notebooks for the Copernicus Marine Wave Norway Shell Training. This video covers part two of the training where we will analyze sea states from deterministic model data. Uh, we are going to analyze an extreme event that was Storm Saver. Uh, that we also introduce in the part one of this, of this training. Storm Saver uh, was the major storm surge affecting the North Sea and the coasts of Scotland and Northern England, uh, with winds gusting to more than uh, 60 knots across the North and Irish Sea coastlines, and maximum significant wave heights exceeded 8 meters in the, this self seas. Uh, this is the last video of two, but remember that we've added a third notebook where you can do the same analysis done in this part two, but for a different storm and with some other differences that will that I will briefly introduce uh, at the end of this session. Um, so regarding the notebooks, the main things that I would like to briefly remind you is that uh, um, how you can navigate through the Jupyter Lab web interface? Uh, here on the left, you have your directory tree where we will have our uh, li library that has been provided with the um, training material where we have all the, all the data that we use also in part one and the one you can use for part three. Uh, our image folder where we are going to store all the plots um, and then here in the top bar you have the bottoms that you're going to use in order to run yourselves so the main one is the run uh, button where you know you can just uh, click on your cell and then you can just press run. You can shortcut this and press in shift and enter. Remember that you have two different types of cells, that the one is going to be the markdown one, which is basically text images. And the second one um, that is going to be the actual code, like for example this one. This is the one that has uh, a number of, on the left. Um, this uh, notebook um, shows how to forecast dangerous wave conditions using both uh, large waves and steep waves. Um, with this notebook, you will be able to investigate the probability of, of occurrence and encountering different sea states, uh, dangerous waves that are going to be a function of uh, significant wave high and wave steepness, and also hazardous cross seas for the Northwest Shelf European Shelf region. And this is going to be based obviously in the Northwest Shelf um, Openicus products. The first thing we are going to do, here you can see on the table of contents, um, is to have a brief introduction of what uh, we are going to do and why this is important. Uh, then we will set up our environment. This is the step that you always need to do when you are uh, running any script for Python, using Python. And uh, then we need to uh, generate our C state probability information and then find the most likely case. This is going to be based purely on significant wave height occurrence probability. Another test that we are going to do is uh, to compute the probability to rapid change uh, to a larger sea state. Uh, then we will complicate things a little bit more uh, and we will compute the uh, encounter probability for an individual high and steep wave. Um, 
as a significant wave height can be a little bit too simplistic sometimes. We will finally um, use the significant wave heights and directions for both wind sea, primary and secondary swales components uh, in order to assess the probability the, that crossing seas uh, might be encountered um, during already challenging con conditions uh, when the sea state is like either rough or larger. Um, so let's get started. Uh, well, an important thing that I should mention at this point again, uh, just to refresh a little bit some of the tips from part one, is that you can navigate very easily on your notebook. You can just click on it and it will take you to the section you just selected and then you can just come back uh, to the table of contents. The same if you want to go directly to part one because you just want to refresh something or go to uh, part three where you can just um, do by yourself the, the practical session. So yeah, let's get started. Um, recent investigations into the causes of shipping accidents uh, show that over 30% of these accidents are caused by poor weather. It is well known that uh, large significant wave heights are a, a threat to ships. Uh, however, uh, numerous seas, uh, ships uh, seem to wreck in relatively low sea states that are characterized by high wave steepness. Um, so this, no this notebook uh, will show you examples of generating sea state and dangerous wave condition forecast, which is going to be extremely useful. Um, so first thing to remember is that sea beam forecasts are uh, usually integrated over a time window. This time window can, go, can be from 6 to 24 hours or more, uh, rather than using a single forecast uh, instance in time. So in these examples, uh, the window is going to be used to generate the forecast that are uh, probabilistic in, in nature. Uh, so for deterministic models, uh, such as the ones presently delivered by, by Siemens, uh, this is achieved by using the probabilities of a given condition occurring over a prescribed time window. So we are going to use two types of probability. This can be defined for significant wave height or wind speeds. Uh, we are obviously will use only the significant wave height one, which is going to be Douglas. So we have two types of probability. Probability of occurrence, which is going to be defined by the chance of the event occurring within the forecast window, or probability of encounter. The, this is defined as the chance of experiencing the event if we were present on site, on site for, the, for the entire window. Both probability types are demonstrated through the examples below, uh, which uh, are going to use the code from the libraries in wave tools that are going to be both C states and moplot C states. Uh, then I will click on the on those and we can just go through the different functions in more detail. But I invite you to 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 do it by yourself as well. So um, in this example we are going to examine the 24-hour uh, period uh, on the 5th of December, uh, during which the storm severe hit the Northwest Shelf domain. Here I mention 24 plus because the data we've uh, downloaded using the subsetter uh, encompasses from time zero on the 5th of December to time zero on the 6th of December. So let's first set up our environment. Um, the first thing to do, as you might remember, is to import our standard libraries. Um, we are going to import for this example that time, NumPy, XArray, uh, Matplotlib, uh, OS and Sys. One important thing to mention at this point is that for this practical session, we are going to use 
X-Array in order to import and load our data. And this differs from the first, for, from part one, where we actually used um, the wave tools uh, libraries uh, that are like more preferable if you if you may like. But um, yeah, you can always use the standard libraries like XArray or NetCDF. That is actually what we use in the in the wave tools library. So um, then we are, we set up our uh, our path. We insert the path where the local library is going to be located. Wave tools here. Then we import our local library. We are going to give it shorter names because it's just easier to write it and to read it in your code. And then we just define uh, our data directory and where do you want to save the plots. Here, by default, we include this folder, but you can just change, it, change this as you wish. So let's run our first cell. Nothing very obvious happened. You just set up your environment. Now we need to load the data. So in this example, we are going to use reanalysis uh, data. Um, these files, as I mentioned before, uh, have been um, extracted using the CMEM subsetter. These uh, um, data files come back with a unique name uh, that has uh, like 13 digit in, uh, digits in the end of the, of the name. And it doesn't have actual the actual um, reanalysis date. Uh, so in the in this part of the code, we are going to point to the files that we've downloaded, and we are going to mention in the code, okay, the data corresponds to this particular date. Um, again, this example uses reanalysis data. Remember, this is three hourly data. Um, as I, and as I mentioned, this notebook could be implemented for any other uh, CMMs, not worth self wave products. Uh, in order to, to use it, you just have to uh, replace, replace this part uh, using example A instead of example C uh, from part one. So easy. So let's run our second code cell. We've mentioned what the year is, that we are in December, that the storm hit on the 5th of December. Uh, then we just say, OK, our file name is this one. All the files are in data. Then we use X-Array to open the file. And then we say, OK, what is in this file? What, what, what variables do we have contained in the file? And could you please print the, the times that we have in this, in this particular file? So let's have a look on what we have. Uh, here we have all the different variables that are contained in the wave product and the attributes time, uh, latitude, and longitude. So for this case, we have a shape of, for time of uh, 9, which corresponds from 0 on the 5th of December, as you can see here, to um, time 0 again on the 6th of December. So now we are all set up, and we can set our forecast lead time to work with. Um, at the Met Office, uh, shipping forecast terminology is associated with a specific lead time ranges um, that are defined and can be inspected from the C-State library. So this terminology is basically this one. Uh, we define an imminent. Um, uh, we define as imminent from time zero to six, soon six to twelve, and so on. Uh, for this example, we are going to use today. So remember that it's going to comprise from zero to time uh, twenty-three. And this also um, can be seen if you navigate to the library itself. 
and you can see in the function lead times uh, how we define them. So equally, we just run our cell. And again, we are printing our uh, times uh, as we define them here. It's just a repetition of the different uh, time frames, if you wish. So now we can actually compute our probability. Uh, for this, the, the plan is to basically uh, generate C-state probability information and then find the most likely case uh, that is going to be purely based on significant wave, wave height uh, occurrence probability. Uh, this is going to use a given C-state scale that uh, is going to be Douglas, therefore it would be for uh, winds, uh, with the input variable being the significant wave height uh, that is named by uh, VHM0 in your uh, list of variables from the wave product. If instead of C-state we want to assess wind speed, you can just use Benford, but um, this is not the case, so I leave this up to you. As as yeah, as yeah, an example for C-state scale, we have here Douglas scale. So we are going to, def to define that uh, C-state is calm if uh, we have waves, like we don't have wave basically, from zero to one centimeter, can from one centimeter to 10, and so on and so on, up to very high conditions from uh, waves from nine meters to 14 and uh, beyond 40 meters, we consider this as phenomenal. We also need to set the lead time for the analysis. Uh, in this example, we will choose the period today which is from 0 to 23, as you might remember here. In order to set our forecast range. So let's set up our environment for the probability. OK, we want to use Douglas scale. We want to use a significant wave height. Our probability is going to be occur. And our time name is today. So let's run our cell. Once the cycle lead time and the relevant variable for the analysis are selected, then the data can be actually loaded in using X-Array. Again, um, we use a read CMEMS wave library in both part one and part three. Uh, in order to load the data, but this is up to you and you can always use X-Array. So we give you all the, the available options and then you can just choose whatever uh, you prefer. So um, we just, uh, well, we just have here our Array shape that is going to be nine, that is time, and then latitude and longitude. We continue here um, retrieving the variables for analysis from the Norway Shelf uh, product files. Firstly, we need to use the two mask array function. So uh, we call the function like this. Then we want to print the shape of the data that we've loaded in. Then we want to plot the variable. This is just a, a, a check that uh, the variable is, is, is all right. And then, well, why not? Let's just save our plot in our image and the corresponding folder for this for this practical session. So we just run this part. And we have our plot here. This looks OK. So we can continue with our analysis. Let's compute now the C state's probabilities. Um, now that uh, we have the significant wave high, uh, we can assess the occurrence probabilities for all the C states uh, within today window. 
Um, for this, we are going to use a Douglas scale and, very important, the function C state speed. And the inputs for these functions are a significant web high, uh, input web high of wind speed, obviously, here, um, the scale that is going to be Douglas, as I said. And then the probability type that we are going to assess, which is going to be occur for this example. You can see this in more detail if you actually navigate to the function is itself that is in here, line number 148. So, how do we call this function? Very easy. Um, we are, have just this line here where we are calling this function with the input I just mentioned for you. And then the outputs are two. A definition list for the C state scale that we are using plus an array of probabilities for each defined C state. So from calm to a phenomenon. So, uh, and then, well, yeah, in this part of, of the code, we actually plot our probabilities. Uh, the inputs for this plot are the, the, the just-defined uh, C-states, the probability of those, the time name for our uh, title, and then scale, if you want to show the plot here. Uh, with this, you just save the plot. You can just... Uh, change this to false if you don't want to save the plot, and where do you want to save the plot, and in this case it's going to be in our image uh, 04, 0, 02. So, um, again, if you want to investigate a little bit more what the function actually does for the plotting routine, you just have to go to C states, more plot C states. And here you will have all the different functions that we are using in this practical session. This one is the one that we are using now. So let's run our cell. With this routine, we are basically testing all the different conditions from calm to phenomenon. Then we are computing the probability of those different uh, ranges. And then we are just plotting with them. The probability is normalized from 0 to 1. Um, so, for example, what is the probability of having very rough conditions today? So, basically, for uh, very rough conditions, we will have a probability of 1, so very likely, um, in the top left corner of our domain. Then the probability uh, is of very rough is less in this part of the domain, northwest shelf approaches, and the same for the North Sea. It's for high conditions, for example, uh, in the North Sea, we have a very uh, high probability of, of, of uh, high conditions occurring. So now let's uh, compute, oh well, important, we have our plot here, but we have also remember in here we are saving our plot. So in order to see our plot, we just go to images 0.02. And here we have our plot. Okay. So let's let's compute now the most likely condition and associated probability. This is just to congregate all the different um, conditions into one single plot. And what is the associated probability of, of those conditions? So, uh, from the uh, C states data, which is the probability of the different C states, um, it's an array of probabilities. Uh, the most likely C state can also be established. So, for this, we are going to just run another function that is C states from PC states, uh, which uses the array of probabilities for each of the defined C states that we just computed in this line. 
So in these plots uh, that we're going to you generate, uh, both the most likely condition and its associated probability will be shown. So with this probability, the forecaster will have some uh, idea of the certainty they can associate with the deterministic forecast that is going to be based purely on the most likely case. So again, how we call a function, here we have it. Input in this case is only the probability of each uh, C state. And the output is going to be the probability associated with the most likely C state plus the array of the most likely C state. This is going to be used then in our plotting routine in the following line where you, you uh, give us an input latitude, longitude, then the um, MLC state and the uh, CPC state. Then again, you just say, okay, do you want to plot the zip areas that are these um, semi-squares? Do you want to save the plot? Where do you want to save it? This is in all the plotting uh, functions. Uh, they, are, they are the same. So let's run this. We wait a little bit. And uh, here we have our second plot uh, with the most likely C state forecast for today. But for today, that is basically the day of uh, Storm Saber. So, what can we see here? Okay, what is the most likely C state uh, for the twenty for the fifth of December two thousand thirteen in the North Sea? So it's actually high, up to very rough condition. And what is the probability of this? Well, in this, in this area, for example, it's around 0.7. In this area, it's a little bit uh, below that, so 0.6 or, or, or less, and so on. So this is very easy to interpret for any forecaster. Um, yeah, as I mentioned, the plots include the metophysipin and high cis areas that are defined in, by this function here in the beginning of this module. Here you have them. But yeah, it's just basically this, these areas here that we've set up in the plot as zip areas equal to true. But you can just remove that and put this, put in this uh, info uh, false. So let's continue with our forecast. Let's see now if we have, uh, what is the probability of a rapid change? So this further test is just uh, with significant wave height again. And it's only to check whether the waves will increase rapidly during the forecast window. Uh, well, here we will follow the analysis suggested by Toffoli 2005, looking at 20% increases in significant wave height within a six hour time window. This is a little bit, uh, the way we, we uh, define the time window is a little bit, a little bit complicated. Uh, so we've added here some explanation that hopefully will uh, uh, allow you to understand a little bit better how this works. This works. So for hourly data, that is not this case. Each six hour window is defined as six steps. So the first one will be zero, one, two, three, four, five. The second one would be one, two, three, four, five, six, and so on and so on. For three hourly data, as in this example, the same six hour window would be defined assuming that our zero represents hours zero, one, two. Our three will represent hours three, four, five, and so on. What does this mean, basically? So in one day exclusive of midnight, that means that we are not including uh, this time 24 plus, uh, we should have seven sam samples. So 0, 3, 3, 6, up to uh, 18, 21. However, in a day including midnight from the subsequent day, as we have in this example, 
we will have eight samples. That is 0, 3, 3, 6, 6, 9, up to 21 to 24 plus. That is, this is basically zero from uh, the 6th of December 2013. So uh, in this example, we continue to analyze these 24 hours. So we will have basically eight consecutive, consecutive six hour windows. For uh, this uh, computation, we will use the function uh, delta set again in the C state module. So as is uh, mentioned here, you just have to run this function. The inputs are going to be significant wave high, the change we want to test again, so threshold, a background minimum we want the increased variable to exceed, what is our time window, which is going to be six hours, and what is the um, time between data points, so basically three hours because our um, product is three hourly. And what is the probability we want to use that is going to be occur as we've been using until now. So uh, we call our function here with our thresholds, uh, our t delta that is 6, our t step that is 3. And then we are going to plot this uh, because this is the best way to visualize uh, the probability of, of rapid increase to a higher C state. Uh, so um, we are just here setting up the title and here again our plotting, la uh, plotting routine in one single line we just specify everything. Latitude, longitude, the P delta set that we just compute with our delta set um, function and again, as in the other uh, plotting functions, whether you want the zip areas, uh, whether you want to show the plot in the library, in the notebook, whether you want to save the plot, and where do you want to save it. Again, you can just modify this as you wish. So let's run our cell. We are calling the plotting routine. This is the, the um, slowest part of the of the routine always. So, okay, easy in this case. Um, we basically don't have much going on. Um, so what is the probability of rapid increase to rough or greater uh, sea states in um, the 5th of December? Uh, well, basically nothing except for the case of the Lee on the Setland in Scotland, where we have around 0.2 probability of a rapid increase to a rougher um, sea state. Okay, so um, as I've mentioned in the beginning of this session, um, sea state is a relatively simple indica indicator of what uh, can be quite complex uh, for individual waves uh, with different heights, periods and direction. So uh, a given sea state, it is useful to understand the risk of encountering an individual wave, which might put a vessel at a high risk. Uh, this, uh, with this analysis here, we are going to analyze the probability to encounter a particular wave that is going to be a function of the maximum significant wave height and the wave steepness. How do we do this? So um, here we are going to focus on small vessels and define the risk based on uh, wave high excedence um, that is going to be excedent of a particular threshold and with a steepness greater than one in eight. The thresholds used are going to be uh, 3.6 meters and uh, 7.2 meters. Uh, defining a capsized risk in beam seas for small vessels, vessels at length 12 and 24 meters, respectively. In addition, the 7.2 meter threshold defines a risk of uh, swamping for the 12 meter vessel in head following seas. So in order to generate the estimates of these individual um, wave high sedan probabilities and calculate the steepness, very important, uh, this analysis needs to load an estimate of wave period. 
so we are not going to be using only our variable VHM0, but also the VTM02 variable from our product. So, how do we compute this? From Forestal, uh, 1978, uh, we know that the probability of a normalized wave height exceeding in a given threshold is computed following this expression with alpha equal to 2.126 and beta equal to 8.42. So the probability distribution function uh, that a height x will be less than x is equal to uh, 1 minus the normalized wave height uh, exceeding the threshold. So um, the wave steepness is computing also following the form here to be significant wave height divided by uh, 9.81 and the period to the square. So this is basically all coded for you in our uh, C state module. In these ones, you can just um, refer to the um, paper and have a look how we code this. So let's actually do it. Um, so the probability type in this case is not going to be occur, but it's going to be uh, encounter. Let's now um, again get our arrays from our um, data. So we will have significant wave height and period. And let's run our analysis and plotting routines. So we've, the first step is to set the number of waves encountered in each forecast time step. So for example, three hours, uh, three hourly for the reanalysis products uh, or one hourly for the analysis forecast products. So you change this with the window in seconds here. Second, we are going to analyze probability of encounter a high steep wave. In order to calculate this probability, we are just going to call another function that is named hmaxp. Uh, this function uses as inputs a threshold wave height for individual wave, uh, a background C state, the number of waves encountered in a sample period that we just computed using this other function, and then the probability type that is going to be, as we said it here, encounter. And yeah, sorry, the, it also includes the period that data in order to check whether waves are close to breaking uh, or not. So uh, as we want to, to check this into using two different threshold, the analysis and plotting uh, is, are going to be, uh, and plotting routines are going to loop over uh, the two different thresholds that are uh, 3.6 and 7.2. So here we call our function in order to analyze the probability of a high and steep wave. And third, what we do is to basically set the title and call our plotting routine. Uh, but again, this is inside our loop that starts here and finishes here. Uh, as in the other plotting routines, you can just set the zip areas to false if you don't want the zip areas in your plot, whether you want to show it in the notebook or not, and whether you want to save the plot or, or not. So let's run this part of the code. Okay, we have our uh, first plot for significant wave for a threshold of 3.6 meters and our second plot uh, for a 7.2 meter threshold. So again, this is very easy to interpret. Uh, what is the probability of encountering high and steep waves? 
larger than 3.6, basically one in the whole North Sea and Celtic and Irish seas. Uh, for the case of larger waves that are uh, more than uh, 7.2 meters, in the North Sea we still have the majority of, of uh, uh, probability of encountering of this type of high and steep waves. However, this part um, have, uh, um, is, is not, is not uh, here anymore. So again, well, if you want to check the plots, you just go to images, and you will have them all here. There you have it. So let's finish then with the computing the probability of, of rough or greater cross seas then. Um, so it is often the case that seas are not unimodal and comprise uh, a local wind sea plus one or more remotely generated swells. So this, this always leads to complex uh, wave fields that make uh, sea keeping more difficult and, and hazardous. So this final analysis um, uses the other components from the uh, Norway Shelf Wave products. Uh, these are going to be the significant wave heights and directions for wind sea, primary and secondary swells. Mm. And uh, with this part of the practical session, we are just computing the crossing seas uh, that can be encountered during uh, rough, rough or larger uh, sea states conditions. Remember that according to our Douglas scale uh, for significant wave heights, rough means significant wave heights from 2.5 to 4 meters. So for this last, last exercise, we will use um, uh, these variables here that are basically the heights and directions for wind, sea, primary and secondary swell components. And uh, the crowd C uh, probability computation is going to be based on um, these components and is going to follow Kono 2013 with a direction separation of 30 degrees and ratio of primary to secondary or at uh, 0 0.6. You can just check again more into detail everything in our C state library. This in this part of the code. So we come back now to our probability of occurring instead of encountering. We retrieve our uh, different variables. So now it's not uh, so basic. We are using many more variables. And then we are going to run our analysis. Again, just one line of code. Um, with uh, another function that is called cross C. Uh, for the for the uh, input variables, we put our threshold that is going to be two point five because we are want to know uh, for rough seas, and then um, we want uh, yeah uh, thirty. For, for this, uh, C ratio is 0.6, just following Kono here, 30 degrees, ratio 0.6, and our probability of occurring. Again, we set our title, and then we call our plotting routine easy, it's just uh, as we've been doing until now, with the other probability computation. So uh, again, input for our plot, uh, plotting function, uh, latitude, longitude, what we want to plot, what is the name, uh, the title of the event, and then whether you want to use the zip areas or not, and then uh, if you want to save it, or where do you want to save it, if you want to show it, or you don't want to show it. So let's run this part.
uh, here we have our new, new forecast for uh, crossing seas at rough or greater uh, level. So again, if we try to interpret this, uh, we can see that the probability of crosses at this type of level is going to be uh, around 0.6 or more in the northwest shelf approach, uh, but for example, for the North Sea is zero. So we are almost finishing, and uh, now we can summarize uh, the sea states uh, during Storm Xavier. So basically what we saw is that high seas are presented in the western approaches and northern central North Sea, and moderate to rough appear in the south of the domain. Uh, the sea state did not arise particularly rapidly, uh, except in this area of the lee of the Shetland in Scotland. Although seas were high in the western approaches, the waves were mature and not dangerously steep. Uh, there is high risk for steep waves, though, uh, to small vessels in the uh, North Sea, Iris and Celtic Seas. And then a significant risk of encountering rough cross seas is observed in Valley and Herbids, which is basically this area here. So here I invite you to do another practical exercise, uh, but instead of for Storm Xavier, for uh, Storm Dennis that hit the UK in the 15th of February uh, of this year. And yeah, I just remember that you can use the code from C states and Moplot C states uh, in the wave tool library that is supplied along this notebook. These are the references if you have any doubt. And then you can just go also to the next tutorial uh, in order to uh, analyze the Storm Dennis. I hope this was useful and I'm looking forward to all your questions. Thank you very much.